You are listening and watching to a very special podcast, Benjamin Hallows. Let us see the truth behind the great mastermind. Is he a villain or is he a hero? Is he an anti-hero or is he an anti-villain or perhaps a Byronic hero? Let us find out, shall we? Enjoy. 24 years old, that's how old Ben was. There he was in trousers and also a waistcoat, jacket, but the colors of it seemed a bit too vibrant for his taste, but he didn't care. The young man was pretty much of a blunt yet intelligent, somehow strangely attractive, but also very much of an eccentric person of a young man. Despite this, he had a pretty much of a kind heart, but he was a wide-eyed idealist in his scientific work. Benjamin was working on something in his laboratory that was right near the seaside. It was a quiet place where he did his experiments and that's where he lived. He was injecting something into a vat, a small little container of liquid, putting the needle in. Then he managed to prep it. There was an egg-like shape of some sort of orb. It felt squishy. Behind him were remnants of failed projects. He tried to do this so many times and it failed, but this time he was gonna get it right. So he put the needle into the egg and suddenly it burst open and out came a creature. Benjamin looked inside. He couldn't believe it. It's alive, he said. It's work. After so many 15 tries, I got it right this time. Oh, yes, he said. He looked over at the creature. The creature was in yellow substance that looked a bit disgusting, but it was a tall figure. The figure rose to its knees rose to its feet slowly and it somehow looked dark and it began to move. Benjamin was excited. <laughs> yes, my greatest creation. You are truly magnificent. The creature looked up and Benjamin said, I am your master. Don't fret. I wish to before he could say anything else, the monster growled and spit at Ben's arm. It wasn't like acid to spray or melt away. Ben was in rage. You idiotic fool, he said. He used his book and slammed the monster into the head. With that force of impact, the monster then thud against the container and it was dead, and there was a bit of blood splatter. Ben was disappointed, but he looked down at his arm. He managed to treat himself instantly and remove all traces of that, whatever that spit was. He looked over at the monster that he tried to create. Well, that was a failure. Great, just great. What am I going to do now? He thought to himself. So he knew he was doing something wrong. He always was a brilliant man, but he was no surgeon. He goes to the university to teach but he became quite bored with the tedious studies and well these experiments he was doing were quite 
unorthodox, but somehow he feels something ever since he's been doing this because of the nightmares he's been having of death. The dream he had once in one dream, he dreamt that he was in a coffin. When he woke up, he tried getting out from the coffin, but he realized he was lying there stuck and he could hear something of a sermon like a funeral. He banged on the door asking to be let out, but nobody heard him. The preacher began to recite the prayer of the departed. Ben just tried to knock a bit harder, crying out, please let me out, let me out, he cried. Still no answer. I'm not dead. I'm not dead. It was a terrible dream that Ben went through, and the next few were no exception. There was one dream of his once beautiful mother who looked rotted away as she had black tears running down her face and she was crying. She had a rose in her hand and she said, Goodbye, Ben. She tossed the flower as she moaned, Rest well. The flower went down, down into the grave. Ben was looking up, horrified. Mother, please, I'm not dead. You have to understand I'm not dead, he cried out. And that's where the dream ended. Then there was another dream. It was Dawn calling out for Ben. Ben looked over to see her. However, when he got close, he saw a corpse-like version of once his beautiful older sister. Ben was terrified. He went back and cried out for anyone to hear him and to get him out. Suddenly, the ground was shaking and disembodied body parts came from the ground and grabbed Ben. Ben tried to struggle, but there was no hope of escape. He looked up and he saw his two brothers, his two sisters, and his mother standing over from the grave. Bye, Ben, they called out. No, please don't leave me. Don't leave me. Ben cried out. The ground began to cover him, and Ben woke up with a start. He was shaking with fear. So he managed to find some way to try to conduct experiments. But alas, he was no surgeon. He was always getting it wrong with the eyes, with the facial features, everything. He had to wonder, what am I going to do? How am I going to do all of this? I have nothing, he said. But he's been working on this probably days, and he hadn't had any sleep. So he decided, well, maybe a nice walk will do, he said to himself. So he left his home for a while. And then he went out into the city. As he was walking through the city, he noticed there was noises coming from the other side. So he went to see and saw there was a circus. Ben was astounded. Well, would you look at that? He muttered to himself. He walked a bit closer. All of a sudden, he looked over and decided with a dull look on his face, well, <laughs> perhaps here will do, he said. He entered the circus, but he ignored the announcer, despite being quite loud. There was a trapeze artist. As she was doing her technique, she somehow fell from the ground. That got Ben's attention. He got up and went to investigate. 
beside the girl who looked like she was dead. There was a young man trying to help her. Benjamin came close. What happened? He asked. The young man looked up. His hair looked a bit untidy. He had a bit of a dark appearance to him, but his face looked vulnerable. You, you didn't see? He asked. No, I was just busy reading, Ben said. Once the young man explained what happened, Ben looked over at the girl and said, I'm sorry, but she's beyond saving. However, the young man was determined to help her. He noticed that there was a bit of a broken part in her neck. He didn't have any tools to revive her. However, Ben offered his own scalpel. The young man looked up at Ben. No, I couldn't possibly, he said. No, you can use it if you want. You can give it back to me if we ever meet again. Ben watched as the young man revived the girl somehow with his surgical skills. Ben was intrigued. He knows? Well, I see. He became quite fascinating with this young man. Sooner, the girl of the trapeze was somehow miraculously brought back to life. The young man who had revived her and helped her was relieved. Ben smiled at this. I didn't know you could do surgery. I mean, this is amazing. You must be some doctor. But the young man said, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm not really a surgeon, but I learned it from the books I've been reading. Ben was impressed, really. So Ben walked over to the owner and talked with him. He wanted to have this young man for himself. But the ringmaster said, Oh, him? Taylor? I don't think so. He belongs with me. I have a contract with him. Ben somehow insulted him, and Ben was somehow kicked out. But Ben managed to look like he was going, but he wasn't leaving. Ben witnessed the mistreatment that Taylor suffered from the circus. So Ben rescued Taylor and helped him escape. Taylor was astounded by the kindness of Ben. The two of them managed to escape from the circus. Ben somehow caused a stir and everyone managed to feel the burns of it. Once Ben and Taylor managed to escape, they managed to head back to Hallows' own home by the seaside. Okay, eh, this is kind of deja vu, but we'll see you guys next time. I'm Catherine Donovan. Bye.